I'm gonna show you the best settings for the Zoom F3 to record fantastic sounding audio in six minutes. Hey, my name is Matt Johnson, and first, you are going to want to put batteries in your Zoom F3 recorder, and specifically, I recommend that you use lithium batteries, because these batteries will give you significantly better life than alkaline or rechargeable batteries. I will link to lithium batteries that I recommend down in the description below. You're also going to want to put a memory card into the recorder. The F3 can handle memory cards up to one terabyte in size. I will link to memory cards that I recommend down in the description as well. Next, power on the F3 and select the language that you want to use as well as the time. That way the recorder will tell you the time accurately whenever you are looking at your recorded audio files. This is very important, do not skip this step. After that, let's dive into the menu. Go to System, SD Card, and Format the Memory Card so that all the files are deleted and the card is ready to be used in the recorder. Back out one menu level and go to Power, Battery Type, and you are going to want to set that to Lithium if you are using Lithium batteries like I recommended. Alternatively, you can select Rechargeable or Alkaline. Make sure you set this properly, otherwise the recorder will not accurately tell you how much battery life is remaining and you'll be in trouble. Backing up from this menu now and connecting an XLR cable to the recorder. In my case, I'm going to connect it to the left input. And then we need to enable this audio input by pressing the settings gear button here and then setting input one to on and pressing the checkbox. Next, move down to the source setting, and this is arguably the most important setting for this recorder. You are going to need to select whether you are recording from a microphone that requires mic or line level input, and if this input requires phantom power. If you're confused by what all of that means, here's a simple way to think of it. If you are plugging into a soundboard to say, record audio at a wedding or a conference, etc., you are going to most likely want to choose mic and not mic with the plus 48V setting because this 48V setting will enable phantom power and enabling phantom power on a device that does not need phantom power could damage the equipment and that would be bad. Side note, V stands for volts, so 44 volts is what we're talking about here. Alternatively, if you are plugging into the back of a speaker, because maybe the soundboard does not have an output, but you find an output that you can plug into on the back of a speaker, you are most likely going to want to select line for your output because audio coming into the recorder at line level is usually much louder. And by telling the Zoom F3 it is connecting to audio at line level, this will cause the recorder to adjust the gain lower to compensate for that and make sure that your audio isn't too loud. Again, just like with the mic plus 48 volt option, there is a line plus 48 volt option as well, and you aren't going to want to select that one either if you're plugging into the back of a speaker. This leads to you probably wondering, when the heck should you use these plus 48 volt phantom power options? Well, you should use phantom power whenever you are plugging a microphone directly into your Zoom F3. So, for example, if you were using a shotgun microphone and you're connecting that via an XLR cable into the Zoom F3, the odds are that your microphone is going to require power, aka phantom power. So in that case, you're going to want to select mic level with phantom power. Specifically, most microphones are going to require 48 volts of phantom power using mic level audio. So by default, you should be good to go by just selecting mic plus 48V. But if your microphone is really loud, try the line plus 48V option, or if your mic requires only 24 volts of phantom power, which some do depending on the microphone, you can go back out and select the phantom voltage menu and change that to 24V if you need to. Phantom power out of the way now, let's go back out to the main Zoom F3 screen. And what I want you to notice here is that whenever I begin speaking, you're going to see a waveform preview on the screen. This is a visual way for the F3 to tell you that it is picking up audio. Here's where things get crazy, because with other audio recorders, you would need to adjust the gain level that your microphone is recording to make sure it's recording audio that isn't too loud or too quiet. But because the F3 is recording audio in 32-bit float, you do not actually need to do this, and the recorder is going to handle all of that automatically. You can just press record and you're good to go. To be clear, you can change how large the waveforms are by zooming in and out to make sure that you are recording your audio properly by pressing the plus magnifying glass icon and then pressing it again to zoom in or pressing the minus magnifying glass icon to zoom out from the waveform. But this is not going to change the gain level of your audio recording that is recorded internally into the F3 because that gain is handled automatically. 
That said though, if you're plugging a cable into the line out port of the F3, zooming in out using these magnifying glasses will change the gain of the audio coming from that port. You can then press record by sliding up the record slider and know that you are recording very high quality audio with your Zoom F3. Now that you have all these settings dialed in, the F3 is an extremely easy to use recorder and will most likely only require you to plug in an audio cable and press record to start getting high quality audio. Speaking of extremely easy to use, I've put together an easy to use audio gear guide that's gonna show you all of the audio gear that I recommend for filmmaking. If you want to check it out and see all the audio recorders that I recommend for the Zoom F3, the cables that I recommend, adapters, etc., I highly recommend downloading it. The link down in the video description. This guide is completely free and I know that it will be helpful to you. Also, I cannot wait to tell you about this video's sponsor, Musicbed. Look, music is arguably the most important part of any wedding film edit. Music is the driver of the emotion in any wedding film and it brings weight to all of the spoken audio and visuals. Musicbed is the platform that I have trusted to find creativity inspiring high quality songs for my videos for over a decade. With the largest collection of highly curated music, that means you're always going to have new songs from new artists to choose from. It may sound crazy, but you're not going to find the one perfect song to use in your film on Musicbed. You're going to find five of them. And then the hardest part for you is going to be deciding which one you want to use because they are all so good. It's a good problem to have. So no matter whether you are looking for a soft ambient track to lay under footage of a bride putting on her wedding dress, an epic orchestral number as they walk down the aisle, or a powerful electronic song for a wild reception, Musicbed has the range and depth of music you've been looking for. You can make the switch today to see how Musicbed can elevate the quality of your films with a 14 day free trial. So give them a shot to see and experience what you will only find on Musicbed. You can sign up at the link in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.